<clears throat> Good morning, students. This is the thirty-second lecture. Today is twenty-ninth May. We are going to see the last part. That is the part B of uh, module five. So, in the part A of module five, we had seen the different design criteria of uh, series hybrid drivetrain, electrical drivetrain. So, series hybrid electrical drivetrain is also called as a uh, electrically coupled drivetrain because in that case what we found was uh, there was a engine and there was a generator uh, they were connected in series and uh, then there was a, another PPS source which was coming in kind of uh, in parallel with that so together engine generator they were generating the main or base uh, power to drive the actual drivetrain and whenever there was a peak demand or extra demand or bumper demand at that time the PPS source it was uh, serving the energy so it was a uh, called as a electrically coupled uh, electric drivetrain because in that case we found there was a DC to DC converter or there was rectifier all those different electrical coupling uh, circuits they were actually coupling the energy produced by engine generator set and the PPS source so we have seen mainly the three different design issues in that or three component design things there so first was the motor design second one was the pps design third one was the engine generator design so all those things were covered yesterday main part that we had seen yesterday was motor design today we are going to start the final part of module 5 so with this topic only the syllabus and the module will get over uh this will take three four days time at least three hours of lecture is required so today is one of them it is called as parallel mechanically coupled hybrid electric drivetrain design actually it is called parallel hybrid electric drivetrain design but in this case as uh, you will find uh, there is no generator in this case only engine is there and in this case there will be pps and pps will be driving a motor so the PPS battery will be driving a motor. Output of that motor is electric, uh, mechanical, and uh, fuel will driving the generator. So output of that generator is also mechanical. So these two outputs. So one is the output from uh, engine, mechanical output. Second is the output from a motor which is driven by PPS battery. These two mechanical outputs will be coupled. Again, we have seen the basics of this thing in the previous chapter. That is fourth module, uh, part B. There we had seen the basics of series hybrid and parallel hybrid. So module four was about EV and EHB. So module four, first part was EV and second part was EHB. In that case, uh, hybrid, we had seen the basics of series and parallel. And in this module five, we are seeing the EHB in detail, series and parallel. So today we are going to see the parallel hybrid electric drive and design in detail and the topics for this are kind of similar with a series hybrid electric drive and design uh, first here there is coming the control strategies so there are different control strategy we will try to finish this uh, today itself at least to a greater extent then there is coming soc control after that there will be engine on off thermostat control so in this SOC control, actually we are doing the SOC of PPS control. That means after the control strategy, directly we are entering uh, the control of the PPS. That means I told you there are two sources. One source is the uh, coming from one energy source or power source is coming from the uh, actual engine. And the second power source is coming from the PPS. So PPS in this case is actually not giving any electrical output. In this case, PPS is giving uh driving actually a motor and that motor is generating electrical output so pps motor controller motor mechanical output this uh, we will see and uh, there is another control which is called as engine on off which is also called as thermostat control so all these things are there in the same line so in case of series hybrid electric also we have seen the same things so while you are preparing for exams in that time it is easier that uh, everything is in the same line uh, what you can find Finally, there will be three design considerations, engine, motor, and PPS. So you are going to get all these topics in uh, the book of Asani, but page number is 255. This is module number nine. And uh, in that, you are going to find design of engine first, then design of motor, design of PPS. All these things will be there. 
Let us start with parallel hybrid electric drivetrain, uh, mechanically coupled drivetrain and design considerations for that. It is said that the parallel or mechanically coupled hybrid drivetrain has features that allow both the engine and the traction motor to apply their mechanical power in parallel. So what is the engine? Engine is actually driven by the fuel and uh, traction motor. Okay, so traction motor is actually driven by the PPS source. So together, uh, the engine and traction motor, they can apply the force on the final drivetrain. So they are in parallel actually. So both can apply uh, the power directly on the actual drivetrain. A very important line, both the engine and the traction motor to apply the mechanical power in parallel directly uh, uh, to the drive wheels. So this is the first slide and that's why we are going to see what is the basics of uh, parallel hybrid electric drivetrain. So in this case we are finding engine and the traction motor both can apply power directly for the drive wheels. In case of series what was that? In case of series engine and generator they were in series and uh, there was a PPS source which was kind of in parallel but engine and generator as they were in series it was called as electric electrically coupled or a series hybrid electric drivetrain. So difference between these two can be asked that can be one question. So in mechanical coupling that is in this case hybrid case uh, parallel hybrid case in mechanical coupling torque and speed coupling. So in case of series also we had found there were torque and speed coupling and we had studied torque coupling in detail in this case also we are going to do that. So when using conventional IC engines as the primary power source so as we are using here engine is the primary power source torque coupling is more appropriate since IC engine is essentially a torque source. Very important point so whenever you're talking about engine uh, more than speed it is actually serving uh, good torque or we can control the torque in a better manner than speed. Whenever we are controlling torque, eventually we are controlling speed, but the direct connection of engine and parameter is torque. So torque is the direct parameter which we can easily control by using uh, an engine control method. So in this case, mechanical coupling has two forms, torque coupling, speed coupling. When using conventional IC engine, as we are going to use here in parallel hybrid, torque coupling is more appropriate since the IC engine is essentially a torque source. The major advantage, very important paragraph, that's what I have given in green. So the major advantage of torque coupling, there are three. And the advantage over series hybrid. So this is actually, uh, there are two things. This is the advantage of uh, hybrid, parallel hybrid. And this is the advantage of parallel hybrid over series hybrid. So two questions can be asked from this paragraph. So what are the advantage? First advantage, biggest advantage, generator is not required. So in that case, in the previous case, that is series hybrid, we found first the fuel is given to the engine. There is one type of conversion. Engine is converting the fuel energy into mechanical energy, second type of conversion. Mechanical energy is given to the generator next. And generator is converting that mechanical energy again into uh, electrical energy. So fuel to engine, engine to generator, generator to electrical. There are many stages of uh, conversion in case of a series hybrid because we want every uh, parameter a driving parameter to be electrical in case of series hybrid that's why there are so many conversions and in every conversion stage there is an efficiency issue so every conversion whenever we are doing there is some uh, efficiency and efficiency is never 100 percent maximum it can be 85 90 percent or not that means that every conversion there is some loss of energy in case of series but in case of parallel uh, such things are not there so what we are giving is we are giving the uh, fuel fuel is converting uh, getting converted into uh, mechanical energy directly by engine only one stage of conversion that's all so generator is not required here very big point a smaller traction motor because in this case you will be finding that energy density is more uh, power uh, is less power loss is less not power is less power loss is less that's why in this case smaller traction motor would do the work uh, because the power wastage is less in this case and conversion ratio is quite high so only the part of engine power going through multi-power conversion so only one part of the engine power is going through multi-power conversion because that is fuel to motor output that is only one stage of conversion so hence the overall efficiency can be higher than in series hybrid so very important point this paragraph is the crux this paragraph is the main difference between 
series hybrid and parallel hybrid so series hybrid there are multi stage of conversion every stage is having some efficiency issue that's why uh, cumulatively uh, the overall efficiency of uh, series hybrid electric drivetrain is less in parallel hybrid only one part or one only one stage of conversion is there of energy that is fuel to mechanical energy by using engine that's why in case of series hybrid we are finding that overall efficiency is higher uh, than the series hybrid so this was the upside what is the downside control of the parallel hybrid drivetrain may be complex because uh, than that of the series hybrid drivetrain because of simultaneous mechanical coupling between the engine and the drive wheels so uh, in this case uh, mechanical complexity or mechanical uh, machine complexity is more than the series uh, hybrid uh, drive train so this is the positives and this is the negatives please remember this slide and uh, this points so where we are going positive where we are going negative for every single thing uh, that we should remember uh, very uh, very correctly and electrical drive train mechanical drive train both are having their own advantage disadvantage depending on uh, our application we will apply a uh, series hybrid or parallel hybrid electric drive train now this is the diagram uh, which you are going to see for coming three four slides because a small amount of explanation is given in every slide uh, about this diagram so this kind of diagram was actually explained to you before in the fourth module so fourth module the last part so fourth module was having two parts first part was ev and second part was ehv so whatever we are studying now it was discussed in a concise fashion in the second part of module 4 and there you did not see a detailed diagram like this but a shadow of this kind of diagram was discussed uh, in module 4 uh, part 2 so what is this in this case the heart is vehicle controller the same thing we have seen in case of uh, module 5 part 1 that is series hybrid electric drive train so here this is the configuration of parallel hybrid torque coupled drive train so this is very important torque coupled drive train means uh, there are two sources first is the engine this is the first source so this is generating a uh, uh, torque uh, this is generating torque speed and second thing is this is a peak power source or this is a battery through the motor controller it is controlling a motor and this is also generating some kind of torque output so torque from engine which is actually connected with the clutch and transmission because it's a multi gear system here so engine clutch uh, uh, gear system and here is coming torque so this torque from the motor the motor is generating torque by taking the power from the battery and there is a motor controller so this is the parallel source or so this is a pps source okay peak uh, power source motor controller and motor this is generating torque engine is also generating torque and how is engine generating torque engine is taking the input from the fuel so if you want you can add another block here that is a fuel source and it is actually given to the engine so engine is generating a torque here transmission 1 motor is generating a torque transmission 2 and they are actually getting coupled with a torque coupler so here uh, is coming the main complexity of the system and it is actually driving the wheels and everything now what all things we don't know here so this clutch is a new thing we are shown motors control signal motor control signal is coming to the motor controller because this motor which is run by pps this is uh, a running of this is actually a uh, uh, kind of moderated or kind of controlled by this a uh, vehicle controller so this vehicle controller is actually the main brain of the whole system okay so there is something called as heart and brain what is heart heart is doing the mechanical work the heart is actually running or generating the power okay as happens in our body so heart is actually generating the power to pump the blood and brain is doing what brain is actually synchronizing everything so that's why we cannot say uh, this vehicle controller is not the heart vehicle controller is the brain which is driving and synchronizing and controlling everything but who is generating the power power main power is generated by the engine so there are actually two hearts one is the engine power this is the main power base power another is the peak power source so if there is some extreme extra or bumper kind of power requirement when the weather vehicle is going through the hill and all or maybe off road so it is passing through a very a topsy turvy kind of road and it's a very rough kind of a road a jungle or desert or maybe a high slope there this peak power source will come into action now the peak power source is continuously tracked by this vehicle controller so this can be a 10 mark question and you have to define you have to explain every part every block with a point so first you write the introduction in introduction write what is parallel hybrid drive and all the things then say there is the block diagram draw this block diagram in detail uh, even if you are drawing free hand i don't mind uh, 
but it should be neat and clean it should be big it should be clean okay and uh, then after that you say functional block description so in that case first you write down uh, what is the engine okay first write down engine and then write about engine and fuel source write about fuel source then write pps source then write about transmission then vehicle controller engine controller so you can say there are two hearts i told you one is engine controller and there is peak power source and there you can find there are two brains also because in this case you are finding first controller or main controller is vehicle controller so in vehicle controller uh, operation command what is operation command there are mainly three operation commands which are coming to the vehicle controller mainly three there are many actually the first one is the accelerator so the vehicle wants to increase its speed so first one will be the acceleration command second one will be the brake command the brake command will be coming to the vehicle controller and you can find here there is a mechanical brake controller so we have studied in the fourth module there is hydraulic brake there is a mechanical brake and there is electrical brake there is hybrid kind of braking arrangement so that question i have kept in the question bank of module 4 also so uh, this mechanical brake controller is actually uh, it is controlled or directed by the vehicle controller so you can see here vehicle controller depending on the operation command coming to it vehicle controller is giving command to the mechanical brake controller so there are a lot of valves uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, disc brake drum brake uh, coupling and other things are there so all those things are getting command from directly vehicle controller so mechanical brake control it is giving command to the uh, this uh, tire it is giving command to this tire also okay so you find these are the two commands so there is a mechanical brake command this is the mechanical brake command is coming here another thing vehicle speed so whenever this axle is rotating there is a sensor there so vehicle speed directly is coming to the uh, vehicle controller the vehicle controller is actually getting two speed uh, sensed two sensed speed one is from the engine controller it is coming so engine contro engine controller this is the second brain okay so first is vehicle controller and this is the engine controller so just to controlling the heart of the system vehicle controller has put another controller so vehicle controller through engine controller engine is controlled so brain is controlling the heart through another sub kind of uh, controller so master slave you can say there is a master controller there is a slave controller and the slave controller is controlling the main part main energy source that is the engine <clears throat> and how the uh, this engine is performing so how the engine is performing that is also sensed and that engine speed so this is engine speed and throttle position so engine speed and throttle position is going to the vehicle control so you can see these are the two speeds so all this you have to explain in the same way in the exam it is not given in the book but you have to try you have to write like this so there are two command coming to the vehicle controller here okay two speed commands one is coming from the axle that is how much is the vehicle speed and second thing is coming from the engine controller that is how much is the engine speed engine throttle position engine throttle position decides how much fuel is being injected to the engine engine speed uh, tells us about how fast the engine rpm is rotating so engine rotation is given by rpm axle rotation is given by meter per second so this vehicle speed actually is telling meter per second and engine rotation is given by uh, rpm so uh, what are the inputs that is coming to the vehicle controller so vehicle controller only you can show a separate block in the uh, write up about this question and there you can see what are the input commands and what are the output commands so input we can find there are mainly three inputs uh, or sorry four input lines which are coming so first input is the uh, speed from the axle uh, that is uh, meter per second second is the input of the input coming uh which is the output coming from the engine about engine speed and engine throttle position this is the second input to the vehicle controller so all these are sensed inputs third one is the pps of soc so how much power or how much state of charge is remaining in the peak power source uh, that thing is being given to the vehicle controller so these are the three sensed uh, signals sensed signals which are coming to the vehicle controller so these are all internal parameters then there is coming operation command i was actually explaining i forgot i left it in between so operation commands there are three first one is acceleration second one is brake third one is direction that is in which direction the car is going so steering so steering brake accelerator all these three things are the primary uh, control uh, elements and these three things are given to the vehicle controller so these are the inputs so in operation command there are three so if you want you can write down so in operation command there are actually three inputs first one is uh acceleration second one is brake third one is 
uh, steering. So these are three inputs. Then there are coming three sensed inputs. One is vehicle speed, another is engine speed, engine throttle position, and there is PPS. So this way vehicle controller is tracking actually all the uh, power sources. Then what kind of control output it is giving. So there are three control outputs which the vehicle controller is giving. It is controlling the engine controller or it is actually controlling the engine indirectly. So this is the first thing, engine control output. Second, it is giving the command to the motor control. That means it is trying to command, it is trying to control this motor. This is that motor control. And last one, it is controlling the brake. So brake and acceleration. So it is controlling the motor controller and engine means it is actually controlling. Uh, that is the vehicle control is actually controlling the energy given to the drivetrain. So first output is uh, engine controller. Through that, it is controlling engine. Second is it is controlling the motor controller, motor. Uh, there is auxiliary source, uh, mechanical source, and third one is it is controlling the brake. So you can write a lot about this vehicle controller itself. So there are uh, kind of one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six inputs which are coming to the vehicle controller, and there are three outputs which are taken from uh, the vehicle controller. So this is the brain actually vehicle controller, and engine controller is a secondary kind of a brain, and uh, all other parts we have explained. So this is a transmission so this is the clutch gear arrangement and here is a torque coupler which is coupling the torque of uh, from the motor and transmission we have seen uh, in the last chapter previous chapter so there is something called sun gear planetary gear all those gears are there in the torque coupler so you can mention about all those gears and there is something like a lock so lock one lock two was there which was ensuring the proper function of this gear in a proper sequence so all those things you can explain and there are three types of links you can find here first is electrical link so this is a clutch this is not an electrical link so don't confuse okay so electrical link is from pps source to the motor controller motor controller to the motor so this is the only electrical link mechanical link everything else is a mechanical link you can find so from this motor output uh, transmission output engine to the torque coupler and torque coupler whatever torque output is producing going to the differential and all wheels so this is all mechanical coupling so from engine to the transmission motor to the torque coupler uh, transmission to the torque coupler and driving all the wheels and everything so this is the mechanical kind of coupling this is only the electrical coupling from pps source to motor controller to motor and what are the signals so whenever i am talking about vehicle controller or engine controller everything else is uh, signals there okay. so these are all signals these are definitely our job comes electronics engineers job come here so these are all elect electronic signals which are uh, sensed signal or which are uh, command signal given from the controller to the other controllers or which are the sensed signal taken to the vehicle controller so this is uh, about uh, this block diagram so same big block diagram we have found in case of series hybrid electric drive train so these two are 10 uh, 10 mark questions very important questions uh, which can appear in uh, from the module 5 so prepare both these diagrams and their explanation don't write explanation flat okay so make points vehicle controller write about it all the signals in vehicle controller write about it then engine controller what is job two three lines about each so there are around 10 blocks so if you're writing three to four lines about each uh, that itself becomes two page and about vehicle controller you can write half a page because what is vehicle controller it's a ecu it is also called as electronic control unit ecu of the vehicle you can see any vehicle uh, electric driving vehicle ehv or ev you can check and you can find what kind of microcontroller and all these things they're using i have uploaded a document with battery management system there also you will find some uh, ecu related uh, ic's which are uh, used uh, to control that bms and all so just go through that 29 page document of dr gregory you will get some idea about what is ecu or you can see any uh, website internet website any tesla and all any car you just check what are the ecus and all they're using exactly which kind of microcontroller high-end microcontroller they're using you will be able to find out so prepare these two diagrams uh, series hybrid electric drive trend that was the first part of module 5 then this is parallel hybrid electric drive trend prepare these things thoroughly so many possible configurations in a parallel hybrid drive trend exist Sometimes you will find that only engine is driving the uh, torque coupler and the final drive train. Sometimes you will find only the PPS is driving the final drive train. Uh, sometimes is high power demand both together uh, through the torque coupler is driving the final drive train. So it is the same thing we had been discussing in the last two chapters. There are many combinations. 
so in case of series hybrid we found there are nine modes okay so in parallel hybrid today also we will see we will not discuss but in pps control we will be finding there are five to six modes that they have talked about so the design methodology for one configuration may not be applicable to others that means there are nine modes one mode is engine running the vehicle second is pps running the vehicle third is engine running the vehicle and engine charging the pps uh, simultaneously the fourth thing regenerative braking so this uh, thing is driving itself and it is giving some power back to the pps source so all these different modes are there and design of one mode is not same to the other so one configuration design is different uh, from the other and their actually mission is also different so when do we use both the sources together when the vehicle is going uphill or when the vehicle is running over a very soft road military vehicle running over a very soft road it is not able to generate very big traction power because road is very soft okay, it is uh, the tire is slipping and all those things in that case the peak power source actually aids or helps uh, the engine to generate the uh, required whatever is the traction power so that is the motto of that so whenever the vehicle is going downhill okay so vehicle is automatically it is going forward so in that case we are putting brake electrical brake mechanical brake does not uh, generate electricity electrical brake generates electricity so in that case whatever electrical brake we are putting vehicle is going downhill that will actually generate some power back so in that case this torque coupler this motor would act like a generator in that case and it would give power back to the peak power source so that is called a regenerative braking vehicle is going downhill so that is the second case so every case uh, the uh, design methodology is different the motto is different and configuration is obviously different power flow is different so that we have to understand design methodology of parallel drivetrain with torque coupling which operates with the electrically peaking principle is shown here so obviously this is the electrically peaking source so mechanical will be the main base power and the bumper power or uh, whatever is the peaking power it is actually supplied by this battery pack so peak power source generally is battery pack it can be uh, ultra capacitor it can be a uh, flywheel mechanical flywheel but most of the time it is battery only so that's why this is said as soc as this is battery most of the time it is said as a state of charge in the peak power source so here the engine supplies its power to meet the base load or operating at a given constant speed on flat and mild grade roads okay, so these are very base kind of a speed or the average of the load of a stop and go driving pattern so either it is a very simple normal kind of a driving or it's a stop and go kind of a driving within the cities in any of the cases the engine supplies the main power to meet the base load requirement and the electric motor supplies the bumper power to meet the peak load demand so if there is sudden spike sudden uh, a big requirement of the power peak power source would uh, deliver that so the control system it's a very important paragraph below the control system of the drivetrain consists so what are the things that are consisting so these are the paragraphs which can which can come at the introduction part of uh, parallel hybrid electric drivetrain so these are the paragraph these are the lines which are written here and then you can go for detailed explanation so the control system of the drivetrain consists a vehicle controller see that vehicle controller has come the first thing in the control system then engine controller to control the engine power because this vehicle controller is doing many things only four five controls or command inputs we have talked here but there are many more than 15 20 30 more than that uh, number of controls are there which is coming to the vehicle controller uh, microcontroller so it is not only three or four many many are there because every uh, if it's a in wheel drive every a uh, tire is uh, having a separate uh, kind of control system and that is actually uh, looked after by the vehicle controller now there is brake now there is uh, pollution engine position a lot of things are there okay so in that case uh, vehicle controller actually tries to reduce its load a little bit that's why this engine controller is there so engine control is something which is kind of a subordinate to this vehicle controller deputy you can say as the vehicle control is looking after the whole thing and so this is the prime minister kind of a thing and you can say engine controller is the chief minister of a state because this is a very important state engine is a very important state and for that a special uh, chief minister is appointed so engine controller to control the engine power because engine is a, a base a power generator that's why this should be tracked this should be controlled in a very separate and very uh, perfect manner 
that's why a separate controller which is under the vehicle controller uh, is designed here so there's an engine control an engine controller to control the engine power and electric motor controller so this is another uh, controller so whatever engine controller is doing motor controller is doing the same thing so motor controller is actually controlling another uh, the pps power source which is the uh, electrical motor so these are the mainly uh, power controllers okay so engine controller is actually controlling the engine power uh, motor controller is actually controlling the motor output power and they both are guided by a vehicle controller you can see this is that one control this is another control uh, an electric motor controller and mechanical brake controller so this one okay and a clutch controller so this clutch is also having a control so which is not shown here from vehicle controller you can show a clutch controller also okay so more you can talk in this case you can just increase this paragraph uh, to a very uh, a long uh, paragraph but this is a very important paragraph because these are all controllers which are finally being controlled by the vehicle controller okay so these are the things which should go into the vehicle controller explanation or uh, it can go into the main uh, introduction part of this parallel hybrid electric drivetrain and after that you can explain each of the blocks separately so the vehicle controller is the highest level controller it is given here it receives the operation command from the driver through the accelerator brake pedal i told you there are mainly three inputs acceleration brake and uh, direction so other operating variables of the vehicle is its components are vehicle speed engine speed throttle position soc pps and so on and all these inputs sensed inputs and outputs are coming to the vehicle controller by processing all the signals received based on the embedded uh, drivetrain control algorithm the vehicle controller generates the control command and sends the commands to the corresponding components or the controllers uh, the component controllers so engine controller is a component controller because it is controlling a part of the whole vehicle that is engine motor controller is also a component controller because it is controlling uh, the motor so a new uh, terminology has come to you which is called as the component controller so vehicle controller is the sole main controller it is actually directing the component controller so beside every uh, main component there is a component controller so the component controller like this engine controller motor controller executes commands coming from vehicle controller since the torque coupler is uncontrollable very important thing. this torque coupler control is not there so there is no controller for the torque coupler you can see here since the torque coupler is uncontrollable the power flow in the drivetrain can only be regulated by controlling the main power source which is the engine traction motor clutch and mechanical brake very important thing actually i have to show it in green so whenever i am uploading this uh, ppt i will put this paragraph into green so what is the need of this component controller so it is saying that the final uh, coupling element that is this is the final power in the terms of uh, torque this is also the power in terms of torque they are coming and they are getting added and that power is going to the drivetrain and the wheel but we don't have control over this torque coupler we don't have control over this torque coupler so what we can do is whatever is the input coming to the torque coupler that we can control because we don't have a control over output of the torque coupler that's why input of the torque coupler has to be controlled that is what they have said that the power flow in the drivetrain can only be regulated so this is the drive train which is shown in the right side so which is receiving the a torque from the torque coupler we don't have control over torque coupler but we can control the input to the torque coupler and that input to the torque coupler is actually controlled by the component controller so input to the drive train can only be regulated by controlling the main power source so we can control engine we can control uh, the motor and we can control the input torque to the torque coupler so which is the engine traction motor clutch and the mechanical brake so here actually main uh, control is coming so engine is also controlled by engine controller which is indirectly controlled by vehicle controller clutch there is also another control from clutch uh, which is not shown here so in the exam you can show here that from vehicle controller is coming another line on the clutch controller okay so that's why we are trying to control the input to the torque coupler because output of the torque coupler is not in our hand important factors in this drivetrain uh, design are the power of the engine motor pps and its energy capacity transmission and control strategy of the drivetrain so it is very evident because a motor and engine they are the main powerhouses 
So we want to uh, control all these powerhouses, their capacity, transmission, control strategy, and all these things. The same thing is being repeated, but every line is, ha is having its own uh, philosophy. So try to understand that. Uh, the design objectives. So this can be a separate question. What are the design objectives of parallel hybrid electric drivetrain design? So number one, satisfying the performance requirement that is the maximum cruising speed, acceleration, gradability. Whenever the vehicle is being designed, there are three vehicle parameters as was told to you. First is acceleration, second is gradability, and third one is maximum cruising speed. So if uh, this uh, parallel hybrid electric drivetrain is able to satisfy these three things, then I can say my design is successful. Second is achieving high overall efficiency whenever possible. Whenever possible means whenever it's an off-road kind of scenario, whenever it is going through the hill, uh, at that time we require high overall efficiency uh, that means at that time more power is required so if i am able to satisfy the vehicle uh, driving and uh, speed cruising speed acceleration gradability on plain road hill if i am able to generate uh, higher uh, power or bumper power whenever it is required uh, my design is satisfactory maintaining the soc of pps so i told you that this is a separate kind of fund so your salary is one lakh uh, per month your expenditure is one lakh per month sometime uh, suddenly in one month twenty thousand extra is required so you have kept a separate peak power source or separate fund of fifty thousand separately in some month if there comes a sudden demand you will take twenty thousand from there or thirty thousand from there you use it uh, that month uh, is gone now whenever in the next month or whenever in the next time your uh, some amount is surplus from your salary you repay that amount in the peak power source. So that is very important, maintaining the SOC of PPS at reasonable levels. That means this 50,000 rupees a fund should always be 50,000. Okay, in a very difficult time, you will take from it, but you will never spend the, this uh, 50,000 for nothing. So, okay, so always this is your safety fund. So always this peak power source should be maintained at a certain, if possible, 100% level. So whenever you're finding the engine is running on the very flat road highway kind of thing, so engine uh, can give 100 unit of power to the drivetrain, but in that case, engine will give 80 unit to the drivetrain. And that remaining 20 unit will, uh, from the engine will charge the peak power source and will take the peak power source to 100%. So that 50,000 extra amount you have to save in that uh, separate fund. So that charging also can have, also can be done through the engine or that charging can be done through the regenerative braking from the output side. But whatever happens, this PPS source, SOC of PPS, which is one of the very important control, which is the next topic uh, of uh, this uh, part. So the maintaining the SOC of PPS at reasonable levels while driving in highway in the urban areas without the need of charging the PPS from outside the vehicle. Whenever you are on the flat road, you are on the highway or you are in the city, uh, driving stop go, stop go kind of a thing. Because in a city, stop go is actually done by electrical braking. And whenever you are putting electrical braking, there is a scope of uh, generation of electricity that is through regenerative braking. So whenever you are in urban areas or in highways uh, without need of charging the PPS from outside, that means this PPS is not getting external battery supply. In that case, we try to charge the PPS either through engine or through the external drivetrain regenerative braking. Recovering as much brake energy as possible. So that is the fourth objective of this parallel hybrid electric drivetrain that is whenever is possible uh, recover whatever is the brake we are putting electrical brake not mechanical brake mechanical brake energy we cannot bring back but electrical brake energy whenever we are pushing in that case we have seen that second quadrant operation or four quadrant operation of dc chopper uh, if it's a two quadrant operation of dc chopper then only we can create regenerative braking then only we can get some power back to the uh, battery so these are the four main design objectives uh, prepared very properly and uh, whenever you are explaining parallel hybrid electric drive trend these four objectives you can write first and then you can start explaining what is called as uh, the block diagram and explanation so parallel hybrid electric drive trend control strategy so this is another block diagram you are finding the same thing but reoriented reoriented in such a way that this is accelerator brake pedal this is the vehicle controller vehicle speed pps soc all the inputs this is traction mode and this is braking mode traction mode means you are actually giving power to the drivetrain and braking mode means you are trying to generate some of the power back from the electrical braking to the vehicle 
so in this case you are finding this is the uh, power which is motor power command motor controller and electric motor so this is the kind of a pps part and engine power command engine controller engine transmission and it is coming here so you can see there motor uh, and engine both are giving power so this is that uh, torque coupling or it can be speed coupling also it is not mentioned here but uh, okay it is called as torque coupled that means this is actually the torque coupling so the same diagram whichever we have seen in the previous page uh, this was actually component wise diagram this is actually power flow wise diagram so in this case you are finding electric motor is given torque transmission is given torque and that torque is getting combined and coming to the wheel in this case you are finding this is the a reverse kind of thing so vehicle controller mechanical power command mechanical brake controller mechanical brake it is coming here and electronic motor that is actually coming here so this is a brake power and again it is uh, getting added in a form of a torque okay and it is given to the wheel and now from this wheel if it is uh, working in the regenerative braking kind of thing so some power goes back to this uh, pps source wherever is there okay so this is actually uh, two side things so what are the available operating modes of a parallel torque coupled hybrid drive train here they are explained engine alone traction that means only this part is functioning only engine is driving the wheel second one is electric alone traction so in this case this vehicle controller motor power command electric motor motoring power wheel so this is only the second part this second part or second parallel this is driving the wheels third one is hybrid action engine plus motor so this is that's why you did this is called as a hybrid uh, kind of a, a system so this power engine power as well as motor power together is coupled here torque coupled and this is driving the wheel fourth one is regenerative braking so this one motor power command motor controller electric motor then braking is happening and braking is applied on the wheel braking is applied on the wheel means it is actually uh, decelerating the wheels okay and whatever is the braking power applied Uh, that can be some of the electric braking power can be uh, taken back and it can charge the pps and pps charging from the engine so sometimes this engine power actually will give uh, if this engine can generate 100 units of power it will give uh, will 80 units and remaining 20 units this engine will use to charge the uh, pps so that pps battery source is not shown here that is one important thing you can see the battery source is not shown here Okay, here it is shown that a uh, motor controller is shown, electric motor is shown, but the PPS source is not shown here. Whenever it is PPS charging from engine, in that case, that 20 20% energy, 80% is going to drive the wheel, but the remaining 20% energy is going to charge the uh, battery. So that is not shown here, but here mainly uh, driving and braking things are shown. But you can always say that that PPS charging from engine, whenever it's on highway or it's on flat road. there is not much pressure on the engine engine is driving very freely it is satisfying all the uh, acceleration and speed and all requirement in that case engine is not required to give all the 100% uh, to the uh, vehicle so in that case engine gives 80% to the vehicle 20% it gives to the pps till the pps is going to the top line till the pps is not becoming 100% once the pps becomes 100% definitely indicators will be there because it's just a sensor kind of thing we have seen what is soc sensor in the uh, second module so as soon, uh, as soon as the soc is fully charged then the whole engine power can be again uh, be given to the wheel okay so all these things are controlled by the vehicle controller now very important thing given here that is during operation proper operation mode is used to meet the traction torque requirement achieve high overall efficiency maintain required level of soc of the pps and recover as much braking energy as possible okay so these are the main agendas that is meet the traction torque requirement first achieve high overall efficiency second maintain required level of soc of the pps third and recover as much braking energy as possible so these are the four objectives that we can find the overall control scheme is shown here uh, there is a vehicle control it consists of the vehicle controller engine controller electric motor controller mechanical brake controller so vehicle control is the highest level that is what i told you this is the main brain uh, that is the vehicle controller and it collects the data from driver and all the components such as desired torque from the driver vehicle speed soc pps engine speed throttle position electric motor speed and so on based on these data the component uh, characteristics component controller characteristic okay uh, and the preset control strategy vehicle control uh, sends a control signal to each component controller so likewise the vehicle controller is the main head 
and it is actually having some uh, distributed other controllers uh, so all the distributed other component controllers are actually controlled by this vehicle controller now each component controller so component controller means beside engine there is an engine controller beside uh, the motor there is a motor controller beside clutch maybe there is another controller beside brake there is a brake controller so they are called as component controller so they are the distributed head of the other uh, you can say chief ministers and vehicle controller is the prime minister so here just talking about the chief ministers so each component controller then regulates the operation of the corresponding component to meet the requirement of the drivetrain so the vehicle controller plays an important central role in the operation of the drivetrain the vehicle controller should fulfill various operation modes okay according to the data collected from the components and the driver's command and should send the correct control command to each component controller so i have discussed all these things previously now only you are finding all those things are written in a structured fashion in this slides and this uh, configuration is different so previously it was all component related now it is uh, kind of a command related how the command flow is taking place okay so this is that diagram because this is a control strategy diagram previously it was a simple schematic functional block diagram it is a control strategy diagram so both the things you can incorporate in the uh, 10 mark question it's up to you your choice so here's the control strategy in the vehicle controller is the key to success of the drag train operation now we are going for one of the main uh, soc of pps control strategy we will see uh, this thing in detail next day but today at least i will give you a glimpse of it so what is the soc of pps control strategy we know uh, what is pps so there is a bumper source uh, generally it is not used whenever the vehicle is going through uphill and all all those things all those times the pps is used pps is not charged continuously so whenever the engine is uh, going through the highway and all at that time some of the energy is taken from the engine and it is charging the pps or whenever the vehicle is going downhill at that time through regenerative braking this pps is charged all those things so when a vehicle is operating in a stop go driving pattern that means too much of mechanical brake we are applying within the city the pps must deliver its power to the drivetrain frequently consequently the pps tends to be discharged quickly here maintaining a high soc in the pps is necessary to ensure that the pps can deliver sufficient power to the drivetrain to support the vehicle's frequent acceleration the basic rule in the control strategy are using the engine as a primary power source okay so that is told to you this is the base source as much as possible and charging the pps whenever the engine has excess power over the required or propulsion so for driving the vehicle if 80 unit from engine is uh, okay then the remaining 20 units is uh, used from the engine to charge the pps so without the pps soc exceeding its full charge limit so we have to reach to the top line of the pps so in a series hybrid electrical uh, drivetrain design we have seen the pps so there was a top line so as soon as we are reaching to the top line we should stop charging soc so we should not damage the battery with overcharge in this control strategy the maximum power curves for hybrid traction that is engine plus electric motor engine alone traction electric motor alone traction and regenerative braking are plotted against vehicle speed we will see that plot very shortly uh, power demands in different conditions are also plotted representing the points a b c d the operation modes of the drivetrain are explained as follows so here you are finding so this diagram we will explain next day in detail so here you are finding that there are uh, five to six different uh, uh, operating modes so first mode is motor alone propelling mode so this is the motor alone propelling mode so here it is the vehicle speed below it is braking braking power and above it is tractional power so here actually we are generating power to propel the vehicle forward in braking actually we are generating power to propel the vehicle in deceleration mode or making the vehicle slow or in the tire is rotating in the uh, smaller or slower kind of rotational uh, speed so there are mainly six modes uh, we will stop with this slide only we will see all these things in detail on the next day and this is another 10 mark question remember that and this diagram you have to produce there to explain all the six modes so what is the first mode motor alone propelling mode so this is the curve in this case is going up and still it is generating some extra power motor alone propelling mode so number one maximum power in hybrid mode so in this case uh, motor is actually propelling the vehicle second one is hybrid propelling mode this is this two in this case uh, whatever power is generated together it is generated by the electrical engine and 
uh, sorry engine and the uh, pps source third thing is pps charging mode this one so in this case uh, i told you that same thing that 80 percent of the energy is uh, given to the wheels and 20 percent of the energy from the engine is going to charge the pps fourth one is engine alone propelling mode so this is this one so in this case uh, engine uh, okay so first one is motor alone propelling mode i'm sorry i made a mistake motor alone propelling mode is in this case only the pps is giving you the power and uh, motor is only the driving the wheel okay there is engine is not doing anything in the fourth case engine alone is propelling the mode okay so in this case the engine alone is giving the power to the uh, wheels fifth one is regenerative braking mode so fifth one is come back because in this case we are putting some braking okay so uh, in this case regenerative alone braking mode so electrical uh, uh, brake is uh, used and in this case the electrical braking is actually uh, doing the main braking thing and last one hybrid braking mode so in this case mechanical braking so this is pmb and i think pmf so together so pmf is mechanical braking power and pm is uh, pmb is motor braking power so motor braking power means electrical braking so this much is the motor braking power and this much is the electro uh, mechanical braking power so together highest amount of uh, braking is being generated here so uh, and they are generating some kind of regenerative braking kind of thing so this uh, diagram we will discuss in the next day so we'll start with various operating modes of uh, based on power demand so this will be our next topic so i'm stopping with this uh, introduction to the maximum soc of pps control strategy we will start from this various operating modes based on power demand in the next lecture till then thank you